everybody, this is Dane with Slater Museum. And even though the museum is closed, I wanted to take this opportunity to show off some of our amazing and unique artifacts within the museum's collection. So come and join me and take a look at what makes this museum so special. We have several tall case clocks on display at the museum. These clocks were all handmade by some of the best clock makers in the region. Clock making was actually a very big industry here in Connecticut throughout the 18th century. And Norwich alone had a total of 22 clock makers, 49 silversmiths, and 66 cabinet makers right on the onset of the American Revolution. Very impressive numbers for a town that would become an industrial powerhouse throughout the 19th century. I wanna draw your attention though to the clock in the center. This clock that you see here was made by Norwich's best clockmaker, Thomas Harland, in 1775. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit on the face of the clock so you can see his name, Thomas Harland, and Norwich etched into the face of the clock. So many clockmakers in the region learned under Thomas Harland. He was the best. The face and the workings that you see are made of brass, and the cabinet of the clock was possibly carved by Felix Huntington. But what makes this clock even more special is that it was custom made by Harland for his neighbor and in-law, Colonel Christopher Leffingwell. Harland was related to the Leffingwell family because he ended up marrying into the family. And this clock sat in Christopher Leffingwell's parlor for many years. It's a symbol of how Christopher Leffingwell was a successful merchant, a businessman, and patriot throughout the American Revolution. Now, back then, it was not common for the average working person to own a clock such as this. This could be the equivalent of a modern-day luxury item owned by those who are well-to-do in society. Now, another fun fact is that back in April of 1776, Christopher Luffingwell played host to the one and only General George Washington when he was on his march from Boston to New York. And although Washington did not sleep over at Leffingwell's home, it is possible that he might have used this clock to tell the time. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again next time.